The Children's Assessment Center was created in response to the horrific way our system was handling child victims of sexual abuse. In the past, if a child alleged that they had been sexually abused, many times they were re-victimized by the system designed to protect them. I worked in that system, and we failed. For instance, a young girl would initially make an outcry to a teacher. Later, she would be asked to repeat her story to Children's Protective Services, then to law enforcement, then to a doctor, and yet again to the district attorney, and on and on and on. At that time, I worked for a state district court judge, and I saw firsthand how our system continued to fail young victims of crime. I remember once a police officer calling from the jail, saying that he had just taken a statement from a six-year-old little girl who had been sexually assaulted and was wondering if the judge was in to sign a warrant. Can you imagine what she was thinking? He was taking a statement at the jail. Was she going to be arrested? Was she in trouble? Sadly, not only were we asking children to repeat their stories over and over, but we were also conducting interviews inappropriately, many times asking them questions they themselves did not understand. By creating the Children's Assessment Center, we are now able to bring all the necessary entities under one roof and have the child interviewed only one time by a trained forensic interviewer. This information is then shared with the various individuals who need to make decisions on behalf of the child. While the interview is being conducted, we have a compatible viewing room for law enforcement and child protective services to watch and determine next steps. The Children's Assessment Center is a neutral party, thereby we are not the arm of law enforcement that may arrest the child's father, nor are we the arm of CPS that may need to remove the child from her home. Cries for a professional and compassionate way to handle child sexual abuse cases were being heard across the nation. As a result of this, in 1985, the Advocacy Center movement began, and now, imagine, there are nearly 700 advocacy centers across the nation. Communities responded by creating their own unique program, with multidisciplinary team members working together to address this important issue. The environment at the Children's Assessment Center is warm and friendly. The children feel safe and protected and comfortable speaking to one of our trained forensic interviewers. Speaking to one of our interviewers is like speaking to a friend. The interview is digitally recorded, preserving the child's disclosure and demeanor, therefore eliminating the need for additional interviews. Throughout the years, the Children's Assessment Center has increased the number of our partner agencies from 10 to 47, and many of these agencies are co-located at the Children's Assessment Center. Our partner agencies sign interagency agreements and multidisciplinary team working protocols. These protocols state how we will each work together, as well as our commitment to each other when working these cases. Through this collaboration, we are all better able to serve the needs of the child Cases are processed faster and no time is wasted on trying to track down individuals working the same case. We are all here working together on behalf of our children. The true vision of the Children's Assessment Center is a greater Houston community in which we won heal children who are sexually abused, and two, reduce the number of children who are victims of sexual abuse by developing new strategies for prevention. Unfortunately, child abuse is at epidemic proportions. There are an estimated 39 million survivors of childhood sexual abuse in America today. And child sexual abuse is preventable at the Children's Assessment Center, we are doing all that we can to prevent child sexual abuse. Our therapy and psychological department provides treatment to 5,000 children and their families each year 
to help them heal from their abuse. Child abuse thrives in secrecy and continues when adults see it as somebody else's job or responsibility to report. In the past few years, the Children's Assessment Center conducted over 1,800 trainings for the Houston community. We continue to increase awareness by educating all teachers, guidance counselors, and first responders. Unfortunately, professionals who suspect abuse make reports to authorities only 30% of the time. We recently had a case where a little four-year-old girl was sexually assaulted and stabbed multiple times in her chest. Her mother, unfortunately, was stabbed to death. After she had surgery, the little girl was there recovering, and guess who was waiting? Two homicide detectives outside of her room to question her about the abuse and what had happened. Thankfully, we had just completed a training for the social workers at this hospital, and the social worker said, time out. No one is going to talk to the little girl except the Children's Assessment Center. Because of our outreach and training to the social workers at this hospital, we were able to provide them with the tools and knowledge of how to respond to child sexual abuse cases. Without this training, more than likely this case would have added to the huge pile of unsolved cases because the social worker would not have called the Children's Assessment Center and the perpetrator, unfortunately, would not have been arrested. We feel very fortunate to be viewed as a leader in the Advocacy Center movement. We have provided trainings for numerous advocacy centers along with their multidisciplinary team members who have come here to our Advocacy Center to spend time with us and learn from our team members. In addition, we have met with child welfare leaders from other countries to discuss best practices and assist them with developing programs of their own to better protect their children. When children come to the Children's Assessment Center, they feel safe, and we do all that we can to make sure this safety is carried out throughout the entire experience here, as well as their journey through the criminal justice system. We believe we are effectively providing healing to the sexually abused children and providing outreach and training for our community. Anne Frank once said, How wonderful is it that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. The Children's Assessment Center believes it's important to always leverage our board, our elected officials, and the media to help protect children. One unique aspect of the Children's Assessment Center is that we are a true public-private partnership. We've developed a relationship with Harris County Commissioner's Court so they are able to fund the 50 CAC employees. Therefore, when we raise valuable dollars on our private 501c3 side, all of the philanthropic dollars directly benefit our children. We have taken the meaning of a public-private partnership to a higher level because of the relationship we have with our two stakeholders, our Foundation Board of Directors and Harris County Commissioner's Court. They both agree to a joint annual operating budget, therefore securing our funding. Each year, as needs develop, specifically for staff positions, we typically ask our Foundation Board to fund these. At the end of the year, if the additional staff position is warranted, I will ask Harris County to roll it into their budget for the Children's Assessment Center. Therefore, we are being good stewards of our county tax dollars. I'm not asking them to fund something that doesn't already have a proven track record. This continued relationship allows for us to uniquely balance and leverage the best of the philanthropic community with the best of our government relationship. Developing relationships with elected officials and asking members of our foundation board to serve on state and national committees has been another strategy that has proven to be successful. Philanthropic members of our board have a greater investment in the Children's Assessment Center when they know and understand 
the difference they are making, asking them to be involved with our advocacy and legislative initiatives has been a win-win situation for all involved. During our biannual Capitol Day, board members speak about legislation that needs to be addressed on behalf of sexually abused children. This sends a strong message of support for our children and reaffirms the importance of our cause to our legislators. Both state and national elected officials are familiar with the work we do through our numerous press conferences and legislative receptions. Taking these two highly effective stakeholders and having them both commit to our program has been an unquestionable success. Lastly, strategically involving our media has added to the understanding of sexual abuse on a broader spectrum for our community. All media networks in Houston view the Children's Assessment Center and our staff as the experts in the field of child sexual abuse, and they call on us to comment and explain various child sexual abuse dynamics. Embracing the media and using them as a leverage rather than being afraid of them has in the long run assisted and educated many children and families in our community about child sexual abuse and ways to find help and healing. The latest research indicates that if you take the time to learn the signs and symptoms of child sexual abuse in your lifetime, you will be able to prevent 10 children from being abused. The Children's Assessment Center is committed to the collaboration with our partner agencies, and this is the key to our success and what makes us effective. We are not afraid to innovate and encourage others to do likewise. We have created a safe environment at the Children's Assessment Center so that every staff member, as well as every partner agency, has a voice regarding the needs of our children. We have a high level of coordination as well as a high level of respect and understanding for the work and challenges everyone has in their respective position. Whether it's law enforcement, child protective services, prosecutors, doctors, or child advocates. I remember attending one of our coordinating council meetings years ago with members of our multidisciplinary team, the frontline workers, and saying to them, you are the voice of change. You are the ones that need to tell us what we need to do different in the future. I thought to myself how horrible it would be if I was a caseworker and I kept running into a brick wall day after day, knowing that I cared about these kids but didn't have a voice to make a difference. By empowering them to be the voice for change, everyone feels they have the opportunity to improve our system on behalf of our children. I also remember a doctor attending one of our multidisciplinary team meetings for the first time. She walked away with awe and told me that she never really thought about everybody else and their responsibility until attending that meeting. She said up until that time I was focused on just my aspect of child sexual abuse and she had been working in the ER for years. So many times it's easier for us to say, you know, I could have done my job if law enforcement had arrested the perpetrator or if the DA had accepted the charges, if the caseworker had only gotten me the information I had asked for, and on and on and on. This is not the case at the Children's Assessment Center because we are all in the same building and information sharing is more effective. Each agency has gained the knowledge and respect of the other disciplines that are committed to working here, and every agency's primary focus is the healing of the children. This is what makes us effective. How we measure our success is seen in the eyes and heard in the voices of our children and families. When we hear laughter coming from our playroom or see a smile on a child's face, I know we are shining a light on the very dark nature of the work we do. 
A mother once said in a letter to us, we found out about our daughter's abuse when she was eight years old. Needless to say, I was devastated. From the beginning, we received exceptional help by everyone working at the Children's Assessment Center. They arranged for me to start therapy and later for us to begin mother-daughter therapy. I continue to save the certificate we received upon completion because it represented an important milestone for us. I can say that I have never been so impressed with the management and culture of any organization. We received the best of the best from the CAC. In 2004, the Children's Assessment Center was one of the first large urban advocacy centers to be accredited by the National Children's Alliance, and we have been accredited every five years since that time. Accredited membership in the National Children's Alliance requires that programs meet 10 standards. These standards ensure effective and efficient, consistent delivery of services by children's advocacy centers to child abuse victims throughout the country. Standards include multidisciplinary team response, cultural competency and diversity, forensic interviewing, victim support and advocacy, medical evaluations, mental health treatment, case review, a case tracking system, organizational capacity, and a child-friendly environment. In addition, we comply with the Texas Family Code on how to become an advocacy center and the required Texas standards to remain in compliance. With our state association, we are very excited to participate in an outcome measurement research study involving children's advocacy centers across the state of Texas. The research study conducts surveys with our clients and with members of our multidisciplinary teams to examine the quality of service provision and the effectiveness of the multidisciplinary team concept. We are very proud that numerous advocacy centers have chosen to model themselves after us we view this as a huge compliment as well as a measure of our success. We speak on behalf of the children whose lives have been lived in the silent storm of stressful sadness. They live with the vicious wounds of being a victim of a crime taking place here in America. To be a victim means to be chosen to be the prey by the predator. Life as they have known it has been stolen or broken by the criminal conduct. Another mom once said to me that her child's soul had been murdered. Please do whatever you can to get it back. The staff at the Children's Assessment Center believes in our mission of providing a professional, compassionate, and coordinated approach to the treatment of sexually abused children and their families. We will continue to help children learn how to heal, and we will learn from them how to help others heal. We will be their advocates, and we will measure our success by the results we achieve. Children and families recovering from the destructive aftermath of child sexual abuse. Child sexual abuse is a crime that thrives in a climate of silence, secrecy, and shame. Fear is what the offenders count on as they groom their victims. Many times, children have difficulty disclosing abuse because the topic is difficult to discuss and involves deep feelings of shame and embarrassment. Then, to complicate the matter even more, the child may feel as if they are telling on the abuser. In fact, 95% of children who are sexually abused are abused by someone they know, love, and trust, which is so difficult for individuals to understand. Then to top it off, family members often struggle with why it took so long for their child to disclose the abuse. All of this can have a profoundly negative impact on the child who is already reeling from the sexual abuse experience. Often, the emphasis has been placed on stranger danger by schools and parents, but there is little information given to children about what to do when the abuse involves someone they know. 
This perpetrator may be their family's best friend or their favorite uncle who is always willing and able to babysit and take the kids to the movies or give mom that much needed break. Single moms and families struggling with working late hours may welcome these offers of assistance and support, unknowingly contributing to the continuation of the abuse. These children typically fear that revealing the abuse will bring additional harm to them or their family members. Many times their fear has been groomed by the perpetrator, who has instructed them over a number of years about what to say and what not to say. Our response to these difficult cases is our extended assessment program. For children who are unable to talk about their abuse in a one-time interview, we offer an extended assessment interview conducted by master's level and PhD level professionals who engage in therapy with the children over the course of six weeks and develop a rapport, build trust, and assess the sexual abuse. This service is for the tough cases, children who may have a sexually transmitted disease and are not disclosing that they have been abused because they are paralyzed with fear. Unfortunately, we do not have enough extended assessment clinicians to handle the number of children needing this service. The requests from judges, prosecutors, and law enforcement officials for this service are increasing each day. Another misconception of child sexual abuse is that the victims want to punish their offenders. Many times children still love the family member who is abusing them and are conflicted about what to do. It's our job to break down this barrier within families and teach these children that the abuse they've experienced is wrong. I remember a teen disclosing abuse by her father and at the same time saying, but my dad, he loves me so much. Sexual abuse is not a topic anyone wants to discuss, and therefore so many of us never realize how prevalent this crime is. We very rarely have a celebrity standing up and saying, hey, I want to be the face of child sexual abuse. The Children's Assessment Center is the face of child sexual abuse. We are changing the dynamic of reporting sexual abuse by encouraging adults to have the fortitude to report abuse. We are also helping children break free from the silence and secrecy and shame that should never define their lives. At the Children's Assessment Center, we work very hard to achieve our goals and have had many accomplishments on behalf of children and families. Once a director from California spent a week with us, sharing information and trying to strategize on best practices for her community. At the end of the week, she gave us an award that read, in recognition of your commitment to innovation, excellence, and the exchange of knowledge. I truly feel that this quote captures the heart of our work at the Children's Assessment Center. I remember starting off at the CAC and sitting down at my table with my yellow stickies and saying, in a perfect world, how would a case flow through the system? And then taking all those yellow stickies and putting them in a notebook and carrying it with me to all these meetings I went to with judges, prosecutors, and everybody involved. All of our partner agencies at the Children's Assessment Center bring that same level of dedication and passion to the work we are doing. We were recently recognized by the Houston Chronicle as one of the top 100 workplaces. This was based on a questionnaire filled out by our own employees evaluating the management of the Children's Assessment Center. Out of all the 100 companies, we were also ranked number one when it came to most meaningful employment. In addition, we've had numerous accomplishments on behalf of child victims of sexual abuse. Oftentimes, the courtroom has been a terrifying place for children to testify. Therefore, one, we created a training tape on preparing children to testify in court, and this tape has been distributed to all the advocacy centers across the United States.
Secondly, we passed legislation in Texas creating a right to a speedy trial for child victims. And third, we are currently working on recommendations for judges on items that constitute a child-friendly courtroom. Another accomplishment in the area of community outreach and education is that quarterly we bring our grand juries to the Children's Assessment Center for a tour and a training. Harris County has four grand juries meeting for three months each year hearing cases, and many of these cases involve child sexual abuse. We didn't want members of our grand juries walking away and thinking, oh my gosh, a father could never have done this to his child. These trainings are designed to open the eyes of the individuals charged with making important decisions on behalf of our children. This has resulted in changing the perception of child sexual abuse for this important population. I often like to refer to our therapists and our forensic interviewers, doctors, and psychologists as the CACA team because when they testify in court, they are such a powerful force. We recently had a case with a 15-year-old girl who was sexually assaulted by her stepfather's nephew. The jury heard all the testimony and found the defendant guilty. For the punishment phase of the trial, they all decided to come back and listen to the testimony. Basically, she had been abandoned by her entire family because when she disclosed the abuse, everyone chose her stepfather's nephew's side. The jury was so impressed with her courage to testify and everything she had been through, they decided to set up a college fund for her, and every member of the jury contributed to this fund. They could not bear for her to be another tragic statistic, and they wanted to give her a brighter future. Yes, I can say without any doubt, we have many accomplishments that are truly affecting change, change for our children and change for our community. Challenges facing our organization deal directly with discussing the topic of child sexual abuse. No one wants to hear about young children being abused. Everyone prefers to think that it doesn't happen to people they know. Yet, there is an estimated 39 million survivors of child sexual abuse in our country today. Child sexual abuse affects every cultural and social economic group. We train many teachers and guidance counselors at the Children's Assessment Center to recognize the signs and symptoms of sexual abuse. But we need to do more. Only through our outreach efforts can we ever begin to see child sexual abuse prevented. I'll never forget a case involving a little first grader who literally froze and couldn't take the steps necessary to get on the bus. She kept saying over and over, I can't go home. I can't go home. The counselor called us and brought her to the Children's Assessment Center, and she disclosed being sexually abused by an uncle who had recently began living with them. I asked myself, how do we even expect these children to concentrate in school and learn when they are paralyzed with fear? Where is the joy that comes from learning that every single child deserves? Disclosing sexual abuse and beginning that long and difficult journey to healing does not occur overnight. It is a long process, but it leads to a healthier and happier life full of promises and possibilities for our children. We have the tools to get them there. We need them to have the courage to break the cycle of abuse. Besides continuing our educational outreach, there is a strong need to reach juveniles. We continue to see an increase in the number of juvenile perpetrators. And sadly, these children have often been victims themselves. Without proper therapy and counseling, many of them may grow up and continue to abuse. I remember once a case involving a young girl who disclosed sexual abuse by her grandfather, and soon after that her mother disclosed, then her aunt and a cousin. It was intergenerational. And now with the use of the internet, the issue of online cyber solicitation has created a whole new dynamic for us to tackle and find ways to reach children. 
So many unsuspecting children begin online conversations with individuals who they believe are their friends. They truly believe they are talking to their new best friend. Yet, at any given moment, there are 50,000 sexual predators online. I remember a case with one of our partner agencies. A 15-year-old girl started a conversation with someone she met on the Internet. They arranged to meet, and when she met him that night, he was a middle-aged man and brought along his 75-year-old father. They both raped her that evening. Educating this population about cyber predators and their manipulative methods is a critical prevention technique that needs further development. We continue to deal with the historical challenges of child sexual abuse, but now with the Internet, a whole new challenge has developed needing our attention. With additional funding, the Children's Assessment Center would house additional partner agencies, provide additional treatment for our children, develop a research component, and begin an endowment to secure our services for the future. Through our continued successful collaboration with our partner agencies, we have found that our children would benefit tremendously with the addition of several other key partner agencies, and unfortunately, we do not have the adequate space to house them. We need to expand our existing facilities. Every one of our agencies currently housed at the Children's Assessment Center indicates there is a high level of case collaboration and efficiency, resulting in better outcomes and dispositions for our children. With our expanded facility, we will have the ability to provide more treatment options for our children and their families. Recently, with cuts in several funding sources, we have had to cut back on the number of our contracted therapists. This has been very difficult because it directly impacts the care for our children. The sad statistics are that children who are sexually abused are 40% more likely to be arrested for a violent crime as an adult. Nearly 50% of women in prison state that they were abused as a child, and more than 75% of teenage prostitutes have been sexually abused. That's why our programs are critical. We believe in a holistic approach to the child's therapy. This may involve expressive arts or play therapy as well as pet-assisted therapy. Because everyone in the family is impacted by sexual abuse, we may need to bring an entire family in for counseling. We offer non-offending caregiver therapy as well as group therapy for siblings so they can understand that the sexual abuse was not the fault of their sibling. The entire family needs to heal and overcome the abuse so that they can move on to a healthier and happier life together understanding that together they can overcome this abuse. Since our current building was built in 1998, the number of staff members working at the Children's Assessment Center has increased by 81 percent, and the number of partner agencies has more than quadrupled, growing from 10 to 47. We just need more space. We also want to expand our training room, a larger training room would allow us to educate larger groups of individuals so that we can continue to advocate for the prevention of child sexual abuse. In the past several years, we have conducted over 1,800 trainings for over 44,000 individuals. With a larger training room, we could significantly increase our prevention efforts. Our partner agencies appreciate the high level of training we provide for them. We continue to strive to find leaders from each discipline to conduct trainings so that our current multidisciplinary team members can learn best practices. We want everyone to be the absolute best they can be so they can provide the best possible care for our children. One fortunate aspect of being a large urban advocacy center and providing services to such a large number of children is that we have a wealth of information available. This could be used to discover best outcome practices in research. 
Research tells us how we can continue to improve the current system and perhaps identify better ways to prevent child sexual abuse in the future. Finally, with the additional funding, we would like to establish an endowment so we can secure our services for children in the future. I recently read a book by Olga Trujillo, The Sum of My Parts, a survivor's story of horrific sexual abuse beginning at the age of three. In her book, Olga mentions the importance of ordinary kindness and love shown to her by people outside her family and how they actually helped her survive. She would clutch their words in her little fists and hold on to them so tight because she knew she would need to hold on to these words the next time she was sexually assaulted by her father. After a child discloses abuse, we continue to hear, how could this have happened to my child? How could it have happened in my home? Where were the signs? This cannot be true. Why did it take so long for my child to say anything? And if the abuse involves other family members, some are caught in the middle, feeling as if they must choose sides. Sometimes it's easier to believe an adult over a child. The dynamics of child sexual abuse are so very complex and horrific. In order to raise the bar with prevention, we would like to change the dynamics of when we begin to provide services for at-risk families. Currently, there is a gap in the process Oftentimes, children are brought to the Children's Assessment Center because of a statement or partial disclosure they have made to an adult. Law enforcement or CPS brings the child to the Children's Assessment Center for a forensic interview. We interview the child, and for a variety of reasons, the child does not talk about the abuse. When that happens, CPS cannot take action, and law enforcement doesn't have a case. We talk to the child about appropriate touch and safety issues, and then the child returns home. What breaks our heart is when the same child returns to the Children's Assessment Center several years later with a complete disclosure of sexual abuse that has been going on for years. In a perfect world, we would have enough family advocates to follow up with these families, an advocate could continue to check on the family to see if they need resources for alcohol or drug addiction. Does this family have a single mother who is struggling financially? Are there other warning signs that could potentially lead to an abusive environment? Currently, the Children's Assessment Center only has one family advocate. In order to facilitate this level of prevention, we would need at least 10. Another gap is our lack of a full-time research coordinator. How wonderful it would be if we could determine what early decisions led to best outcomes, both in civil and in criminal court. Reviewing and researching our cases to determine this information and evaluating our data is a luxury that does not currently exist. We need to be the voice of hope for the other children like Olga, who are holding on to our words in their tiny hands. If we had additional staff to provide the family advocate services and a research component to the work we do, we could prevent child sexual abuse. There would be no more horrific cases like Olga. Thankfully, she survived due to the love and kindness shown to her by everyday individuals. It is time for each of us to stand up against child sexual abuse and be that individual for the other Olgas who today need our financial support and the kind words to give them hope for the future. Together, we can make a difference and break the cycle of child sexual abuse.